But first of all, I mean, if you talk to Landry, how's he holding up through all of this? Uh, he's doing well, um, as expected. Um, obviously, it was big news, and being so far away from home, um, it's tough for him. Um, he didn't participate in our uh, scrimmage yesterday, but he was there. Um, you know, his host family that uh, helped him down at Mount Burton and stuff came up uh, to give him some support also. And all the guys kind of took their time and ran over before we started. And uh, he was there and uh, got back in the circle afterwards and stuff. So, yeah, it's a, it's a tough situation. But he'll be okay. He'll be all right. How has he done this offseason in improving his game? Yeah, he's, um, you know, I think he's just fell in love with, like, working out and back in the weight room and just trying to get back to basics and things like that. And uh, he's been really good with the younger guys in our program, especially uh, Legend, our younger post player, and even the other guards. He's been really a leader um, that way, um, just energetic. Uh, we missed a little bit of that, you know, just when we walked in the arena and stuff, guys were kind of like, kind of seeing things out and he usually gets into his routine or pulls a couple guys in. So uh, I think he's really embraced the leadership role and uh, in that he has a little urgency as a senior, you know, he's a senior leader and uh, he wants to get to the tournament. So it's that clock. It's like, oh man, I'm walking in May <laughs> with a degree. It's like, hey, let's get something done my senior year. It's not really his demeanor to get me in the middle. Yeah, he, uh, He's not the meanest guy, but he's not the softest guy either. You know, he's one of those guys, uh, I think he gets frustrated some and he's out of position. He gets into foul trouble last year. I think that kind of uh, derailed his ascent, like from his sophomore year to his junior. Everyone wanted that. He needed to be on the court more. And he has to really work on his defense and trying to, you know, best post defense is not to let the ball in there <laughs> at all and try to take it away and using air time to get around your defender. And he's really worked on that because post guys, there's a referee right three feet away on the baseline. So they see they see everything pretty pretty much in the post. And that's going to be an emphasis too, post play too, uh, especially early in the season with the freedom of movement in the post and then hand checking with the guards. Do you want to see him score more or are you fine with him just rebounding and defense and doing things down there? Yeah, I think um, that's what's like our emphasis. I know uh, with coach, you know, just kind of do what you do well. Be a rebounder, be a defender, but then he has good moves. He's stretched out. Uh, we really emphasize, you know, short corner shots for our post players. We call it in the gutter, opposite of the ball screen. And be ready to shoot the ball or coming back to the elbow. So those guys can make those shots. Um, he's confident in ball handling out there with handoffs, you know, maybe spraying it off a ball screen to the opposite side. Um, so, no, we uh, want him to be, do everything. He's a senior. He should do everything. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about the scrimmage you just had and what's that to you about the performance? Yeah, um, like I said, uh, alluded to a little bit before, a little slow start, just getting used to the big barn and stuff like that, and uh, a little bit colder up there uh, with the ice underneath. and. Uh, the guys got used to it, and uh, overall, we we're pretty happy. You know, we played three 12-minute scrimmages, uh, three segments, and not too many subs. And uh, guys played a lot of minutes. We got a lot of things on tape, and we actually broke those down with our position coaches um, last night. And going to have some meetings with those guys tomorrow. But overall, pretty good. We had uh, obviously Bloss had a great, uh, efficient offensive game with 24 points, and got to the free throw line. Uh, took three, only three threes, so he didn't fall in love with that, but he drove it better, he drove it left. And Coach and I driving back was like, the game slowed down for him. That's when you know you're a good player. Like, he's not rushing anymore. City's like that a little bit now. Not saying he's, you know, uh, Kareem or anything in there yet, but, uh, or Elijah Wan, but uh, he's getting better attempts off. He doesn't look like he's stuck or he's forcing things up. So. Uh, those are good. And then uh, our big guy, Legend, uh, had a triple-double. He had, uh, uh, I think, 11 points, 12 rebounds, and 10 fouls. So uh, <laughs> yeah, we got to work on that defensively with him. Uh, just the physicality and just the movement and things and just getting to his right spot. So 
Uh, he hasn't played too much, but uh, he uh, he had a good, uh, pretty good outing. Caught the ball and finished it some, so that was good. Is it reasonable to expect that City can get into that ten to twelve minute range somewhere in there? What are you guys expecting out of him? Yeah, I think I think we have to have that out of him. I think we had a drop off when Landry on the bench, just having a threat in there, and I think he's more of a threat this year. And uh, Always talk about the learning curve. I think he's on top of the learning curve finally. Uh, knows what to do. You feel confident in him. Um, so, yeah, he's going to definitely play that. Legion was a little late getting on campus, right? Right. Is he, is he adjusted well? Is he fitting in now with what you guys want to do? Oh, yeah. He's, I mean, he's a sponge. Like, uh, you know, I think he really is appreciative of just working with him, getting extra work with in him all the time. And, it's a, pro a work in progress. I mean, you know, obviously everyone's like, okay, seven feet, automatically. It's like, oh, he can play. No, I mean, he's he's going to be keep on working. I mean, like all those guys, especially in the post position, unless you're a lottery pick, in any conference you go to, there's going to be a learning curve in how physical it is, and that's what he is right now. He just has to get there. You know, he's seven feet, around 250, um, but he's he has to get stronger. He has to embrace physicality. Is he – Having to make up for some of the last time he had over the summer? A little bit. Um, just the individual workouts, just getting more reps, uh, working on his skill uh, around the basket and like a go to move. But um, no, he's uh, he's been a joy and he's been great with the teammates and stuff and uh, he's willing to work. So sometimes it's the worst time he gets all frustrated. I go, hey man, it's only been eight practices or something. You get 100 practices during the year and 32 games. So you're going to improve. You just see all those other guys. That's the thing. Like new guys never see the older guys as as a freshman. They don't see Landry as a freshman. They just see the finished products. Like, oh man, he's kicking my butt. But no, it's just the progress. You know, just the progression. Who are some guys who have stepped up this year and become leaders on the team? Yeah, uh, Landry uh, definitely. I think uh, Jerron Blossom game, and we're trying to get Dante to the be more vocal. Just our returning guys have been through the wars. Um, you know, obviously sitting out and having a rod there. So Avery's, you know, trying to do that a little bit. Then Rope, Rope's doing that too as a senior. Um, so, you know, our biggest probably question mark is who's going to, you know, get that two spot um, for us. I think we're all set three, four, and five. You got Avery and Rope as a point guard. Do you go small with Rope and Avery, and um, or you go with you know Gabe and Ajuka and stuff like that. So that's the battle right now in preseason. How has Roper performed? You know, and trying to earn that spot. Oh, he's been great. His speed is elite. Like when he goes, he's tough to you know, and he's passing better off ball screens. You always worry about getting eaten up in a ball screen because he's small, but. Uh, He's seen the court better, and then his open court speed uh, is very good, pushing the ball and uh, finding people. So, yeah, he's, he's doing well. The personnel you have in place, would the team be more athletic, or do you still want to play half court, slow down, minimize possession? It's funny. That's, you know, it's, we try to run. <laughs> I mean, I know it's crazy. The guys have to try to run and things like that. We're trying to be better in transition. We want to have, like, a high – you know, offense is efficiency in transition. Uh, good offense is like one point per possession in transition. You got to get to one four, one five. Like you got to score. And I think off our defense is only playing thirty seconds instead of thirty five. And how good we can be, that's our big push. It's like trying to get good opportunities, cross the floor, pitch ahead, and attack uh, when the defense is not set. Because I think you know it's going to be interesting how people play with a thirty second clock. Do you go? Soft press back at a two three. I mean, just to eat up some clock and things like that. So we've kind of we actually put in some zone already too. It's probably the earliest we put in a zone because we might have to play two small guards up top, and especially with the hand checking and things like that. So it's going to be different. You mentioned the floor with the ice underneath. But work with that. Oh no, the the flooring itself was fine. I think. Uh, it was just the black, whatever they used when they got off the floor. I think they had the door open for humidity or something. I mean, it was a little bit warm yesterday or something like that. But nothing, the floor was perfect. There was no seepage on the floor. It's just off the floor a little bit. You guys aren't noticing it's slipping? No, no, not on the wood. It was just like, you know, if you're off, it's like you're running after a ball or something afterwards or something. It wasn't nothing. Nothing you have to be worried about. You mentioned the shooting in an unfamiliar 
place. Is that the biggest concern when you go from practicing in Jervy to this big open area, just the, the depth perception? A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Um, that's why we got up there. I thought it was a great thing to do yesterday. Um, spent some time, drove up, and just let those guys shoot for a while. And then we got warmed up, and we had a little uh, referee's clinic that kind of went over all the new rule changes. Um, and then we had a scrimmage. So, um, you know, I thought, you know, our shooting, you know, obviously was a little bit down because we were like, we chart everything. You know, we have a SWAT team of managers, man, you know, we're doing everything. And the first nine practices, I think we're shooting five on five drills or 39% from three in our five on five drills. Now, if we can continue that, that'd be great because I think 34% was uh, NCAA average. 36 was NCAA entry into the field. So, I mean, if we got to get it up, we were at 30% last year. And, um, you know, the more familiar you are with the arena, the better. And we'll get up there a couple of times. We'll go up there next uh, weekend on the 24th and have an exhibition game, too. So, uh, that's our big emphasis. You know, we'll go back in the gym. We've been shooting in the mornings with two groups at 6.30 and 7. And they, you know, come back to practice. So, we're emphasizing shooting. <laughs> When you have a good nucleus like you have coming back, how disappointed were those guys in the way last year ended, and how much that motivated them for this year? Yeah, I think uh, it was like a whole learning kind. Of, lose, you lose your rock. You know, KJ left early. People were trying to find themselves. Things didn't go well. We'd have to fight through adversity a little bit better. You know, I think uh, you know when we're making shots and things like that, everyone everyone's jacked up. <laughs> but then, like when you get down, we got to fight through some things. And uh, we, you know, talked about that and kind of see some more urgency from those guys uh, this year. And so uh, excited to see because this is the first time in I think six years we've been here. We had a returning scorer back. So. We we'll don't have to reinvent the wheel some, you know. <laughs> and then we get some extra different options at the point guard, some extra shooting up there too. So uh, it'd be interesting. Now you're going to miss some things too from last year. You know, Rod, shut down defender. You can, you know, shut down Cooney for the whole game, <laughs> chase him around. We got to find someone who can do that, um, you know, on the perimeter. And the, the depth, feel, you feel much better about the depth this year overall? Yeah, I think uh, the rotation, I think. Those guys, as as players, you just want to give your coaches confidence. I think we have confidence in all those guys. Um, Legend now is behind probably a couple other guys just because of physical and just getting up to speed. But you know he'll provide some things for us. And then up front, then obviously with Ty Hudson, you know he's kind of like a combo guard. Um, you know he had 11 points first time as a scrimmage. That was good. He made some shots. Competitor. Probably the guy who's taken or attempted the most charges, you know, take charges in practice. So he's been good. He's been good, and just you know, it's just going to be processing who can fit fit in what spots. I think a few international guys on the team. Do they bring any different perspective to the roster? Yeah, they uh, usually those guys are always really appreciative <laughs> of what uh, they're given. Um, sometimes they have a good perspective of guys, maybe you expect things, you know, or you're getting recruited to that level, or AAU guys, and you know, everything like high school coaches and all that, uh, they haven't been through that, and they, you know, they have to leave their families. I mean, I always think it's that's amazing. They can leave their families and learn a new culture and come in here and, you know, just break away and just try to do something like that because of an opportunity. And uh, we're blessed to have that opportunity every day. And I think they give that sometimes to our other players. You were talking about the rule changes a minute, uh, a few minutes ago. The restricted lines were moved out. You know, there's no longer the five second call on drip. What do you think is going to have? Which one of those will have the biggest impact on the game? Or maybe even on clubs? <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> it's a different one. It's like, I think coaches can't call timeouts to like, a live ball. To a live ball. Right. So someone on the court has to have an internal clock, probably the inbounder against a press or something like that to call timeout. We got to be very cognizant of the fact how many timeouts you have and things like that. I mean, now post play, hand checking, that's going to be definitely uh, the emphasis right now, freedom of movement. Uh, that's a big term. And, uh, you know, I think those are the ones that are going to be the biggest, biggest 
factors. I mean, there's just going to be a lot of fouls called, especially early. I mean, that's how it is. I mean, and you got to be smart enough, and we have some different packages where we have some driving offenses to take advantage of that, get to the bonus. I mean, they're going to be calling it, so might as well. And I think that's where you're going to play to see some zone, too, earlier in the season. That being said, uh, Landry Noko had a little bit of uh, issues last season getting in foul trouble early. Uh, you think he's going to see some improvement in that area this year? Yeah, he better. Yeah, we've been working on it. <laughs> yeah, we've been doing all kinds of drills and trying to get him to be uh, – Move when the ball moves and use air time to get in the right position. Uh, I think that's the biggest thing. I think too many guys wait for the ball to be close and then they try to get around a guy. It's hard playing against big cats in there. <laughs> like 6'10, 270 guys, you got to be smart about it and be, uh, be the hammer, not the nail. And uh, I think he's trying to do that. Um, you know, we can play a little bit of zone, but that's not what we kind of do. But we'll, we'll do some things. Um, I think it'll help a little bit. In the post, used to be when you're back to the basket, when the guy catches the ball, you got to disengage. You can still have an arm bar the whole time and protect yourself when the guy's back to the basket. So I think hopefully that'll help a little bit. But the best defense, like I said, don't let the ball get in there. So, And then he just has to be, you know, get to the right spot on help and things like that. He's a little bit late and uh, gets his arms down a lot. And we're trying to get him up a little bit higher.